Yes, welcome into Sports Bit. Betty and Insight today, Polly and Teddy. Tuesday, January 10th. Big game breakdown, some marquee college games to go over, and we'll get to one game in the association. Tuesday means the deep dive with Jimmy Vaccaro, bookmaker for over 40 years. We recap the weekend in the NFL playoffs, and as always, play of the day. Well, another classic in the national title game, Clemson and Alabama. 14 to nothing, Alabama. Saban couldn't hold a 14 to nothing lead. 14 to 7 at the half. My God, where do you begin? Again, just like what happened last year, a shootout in the fourth quarter, a ton of points scored in the second half, and Watson could not be contained by this Bama defense again, Teddy. No, I mean, let's give Deshaun Watson all the credit in the world, uh, as well as his receivers. I mean, they were <laughs> just about his entire receiving core made huge plays in that ballgame because Clemson's minus two in turnovers in that ballgame. Uh, all right. When you're minus two in turnovers, and of course, uh, the, the defense held Alabama to just the single field goal off of those two turnovers. But when you're minus two in turnovers and you're a six and a half point dog and you win the game outright, you're doing something right. And uh, it was a really bad result for the house. I mean, Clemson money never slowed down in Las Vegas. Most shops closed Alabama minus six here in Las Vegas. Most offshores at six and a half. There were plenty of six out there. Uh, Ed Simons. Here's a quote from Ed Simons at the Westgate uh, here, uh, the Superbook here in Las Vegas. Quote, it's just a constant flow of people coming in, betting a nickel, a dime, two dimes on the Clemson money line. Just constant. You know, William Hill saying that, you know, they took a $100,000 bet on Clemson as a six and a half point dogs. They took three and a half more, as much money uh, on Tigers as they did on Alabama. Same story at the MGM, at Caesars, at CG. The books took an absolute beating on this game, Polly, on the heels of a really bad NFL weekend. Yeah, good point. At the MGM, they took four six figure bets, three on the dog there. So that hurt. And the Clemson offense wears down the Bama defense. Fowler mentioned it at the end of the game. Alabama gives up 21 fourth quarter points after allowing 32 all season. Come on. Yeah. And the Bama offense, I mean, the Alabama offense, they failed on 12 consecutive third down plays to close out the game. And they had three fourth quarter drives, all three of them, before Clemson took the lead. They had three fourth quarter drives. They had a good field position on all of them. All of them with a chance to put the game away and go back up two scores. And all three times it was like, ugh, you know, they had the poor execution. There was Howard grabbing the pass that was meant for the running back. That would have been a big play. There was Hurts running out of bounds when he could have scrambled for the first. And there was that weird, you know, just chuck it up there and hope our Darius Stewart can catch it play. The urgency wasn't there. And as you mentioned, the defense that gave up 32 points in the fourth quarter all year Three long TD drives from Clemson in that fourth quarter. I mean, the Tigers dominated the box score. Yep, they blown coverage again on O.J. Howard after he killed him last year. Scarbo gets hurt. That was a key injury. He had two touchdowns and 90 yards before he had, uh, you know, go everyone in the tent now. Nowadays, how they do that. But, you know, when you, when you lose like this, Teddy, and you struggle, it opens up the uh, debate about Kiffin and Sarkeesian. Yeah, well, if you look at Alabama and say, all right, they scored 31 points. You know, their offense did what they were supposed to do. I mean, they went 2 of 15 on third down, correct. And Hertz wasn't sharp. You know, 14 to 32 for a buck 55 uh, for the team. And, of course, that includes the flanker pass. Uh, whereas, you know, Clemson threw for 420. It was the Alabama defense that couldn't get it done. The same story if you had Alabama minus the points last year. Except that last year they won the game straight up. Fourth quarter, defense got gassed, couldn't handle uh, a, a really good passing game. And, I mean, Deshaun Watson was the best player on the field. He was phenomenal in that ball game, Paulie. Uh, and it wasn't even close. And, you know, Bama outrushes Clemson 6.5 to 2.2. <laughs> uh, you know, they get 221 yards on the ground compared to 92 uh, for the Tigers. But, no, you know, you, you say, all right, who's going to win the game on the ground? They're going to cover the number. Heck, they didn't even win the game, let alone cover the number. And that's because the defense couldn't get stops when it mattered most. Yeah, and let's be real. I mean, you don't see that kind of quarterback play in the SEC. And he has carved them up the last two games. I've always said an accurate passer, you can move the ball in an SEC defense. And then congratulations to Clemson. And we talked about it yesterday. Sweeney in that role as a dog and what those fifth-year seniors were able to accomplish in the bowl record, truly amazing. And they were this close away from going back-to-back. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it was the and Clemson blocked the punt in that game. You know, <laughs> I mean, they did. You think, think of Alabama always had with the edge on special teams 
always with the ability to score on defense. And not only didn't they make a whole lot of play, like big plays in the second half with their defense, but you know, the defense couldn't get stops with the game on the line. That's what you count on Alabama for. And they haven't been in many close games in the fourth quarter. The only one I was thinking of, I mean, the LSU. LSU was the only game. And I think that the fact that Clemson had been in that spot so many times over the course of the last two seasons, I think that served them well with the game on the line late in the fourth quarter. Kudos to Swinney and the Tigers. Uh, they got my money, I'll tell you that much. Great game there. Uh, to the NFL playoffs, updated Super Bowl odds in a second. Will they take any Texans money? Patriots open a 16-point favorite, minus 1,800 on the money line. It's the largest playoff spread since the 98 Vikings were laying a big, uh, laying the same uh, spread at home against Arizona. They got the money. The 94 49ers were laying 17 and a half and then 18 in the Super Bowl. They got the money both times as well. So a huge point spread in this New England game. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, I mean, here's a quote uh, from Jason Symbol, the vice president of risk at CG Technology here in Las Vegas. Quote, we've taken almost $19,000 on New England and $196 on Houston, <laughs> you know, uh, after it opened. And of course, uh, there were folks that were laying the uh, minus 1800 on the money line where you need to risk 1800 to win $100. Uh, betters were doing that. Uh, you know, that's not your square betters, but uh, <laughs> the wise guys don't mind laying a lot on the money line to win a little in a game that they expect, obviously, the Patriots uh, to come away with the victory. But you talked about the last three times that we've seen point spreads of 15 or higher in an NFL playoff game. And, you know, it's been since the 90s since we saw that and the chalk covered in each of those contests. I went back through the entire 21st century yesterday, Paul. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm sure there was something. I'm sure there was something. Nothing higher than 14 and a half. Very good. Uh, anything on the Super Bowl odds? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's just run through them real quick. You can flow the uh, graphic up right now. Uh, these are the updated odds, courtesy of the Westgate here in Las Vegas. Obviously, uh, from one shop to the next, lines vary significantly. If you're interested in betting any Super Bowl future or any future anywhere, shop around. But here are the numbers. Patriots at 3-2, to two, or plus 150. Uh, Cowboys at 9-2. to two. Then the Falcons at 6-1. to one. The Chiefs and Steelers at 8-1. to one. Seattle and Green Bay at 10-1. to one. And all those Houston Texans at 40 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. All right. How about bad for the books in the NBA? Here's a tweet from uh, John Roy, who tweeted at us with the Wojo as well. Derek Rose goes AWOL, and, and the Knicks and teammates didn't hear from him until after the game. Yeah, and uh, uh, John Roy, I appreciate the tweet. When the teammates don't know, when the coach don't know, we're not going to know. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I mean, he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. The coach, here, here's what. Uh, uh, Hornacek said, quote, we don't have enough information to really give you anything. That's going to have to wait until we hear from Derek himself. Basically, what it looks like is he was just a no-show uh, for the contest. And then, of course, Carmelo uh, got two technicals and got tossed. And Anthony Davis scored 40 points, got 18 rebounds, uh, only about 28 minutes of playing time. And New Orleans plus 26 with him on the floor. Heck, Anthony Davis, the unibrow, even knocked down a three-pointer in that ball game, Polly. Uh, really ugly result, not a really ugly night for the New York Knickerbockers, and that too, a bad result for the house. There was nothing but New Orleans money. And a ton of Thunder money. It moved early because Butler was a game-time decision. Wade was questionable. Butler had the flu. He played 29 minutes. He had one point. Bulls blown out. Oh, yeah, and you know, Oklahoma City went from plus two to minus one. Another very bad result for the house on Monday night, and of course, when you're talking about game, a, a night where there wasn't a lot of other action besides the national championship game, a move like this with all the OKC money, not good result. And, of course, uh, the money came, a, a little bit of money came back on Chicago because originally Wade was going <laughs> Wade, Wade to sit on the first of second to ba uh, of, of back-to-backs, and then Butler wasn't going to play, and then they both ended up playing. But, as you mentioned, at one point, from Jimmy Butler at 29 minutes, just 0 for 6 from the floor. And there's a decent chance that the Chicago could sit Dwayne Wade tonight. They could sit Butler tonight. Don't know what's going to happen here. Likely to be a fluid situation. Wade, uh, only 28 minutes of playing times versus the Thunder. And the Bulls really didn't chase that hard after falling down by 25. Very hard to bet the NBA early. Early in the day with how teams sit guys. I mean, the Kings sit Cousins 
when they don't even have a back to back? Yes. Yes, Paulie. I don't uh, I don't I don't argue with that. It's crazy what's going on in the association. A lot of and especially the Cavs with how they treat Kyrie, LeBron, and Love. Up next, we'll start with those Cavs. Big game breakdown. They're in Utah to take on the Jazz and the number one team in the country, six point underdogs. We'll get to that coming up on Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. That's right, the 8th Annual SBR Forum Bash will be held at the breathtaking, all-inclusive Hard Rock Hotel in Punta Cana on Super Bowl weekend. Join Natalie Rydstrom and the Odds Couple as they mingle with SBR pros and have fun under the sun. Stay tuned for video coverage of bash activities, including a $5,000 poker tournament sponsored by uwager.eu. Only on SBR, your sportsbook authority since 1999. Back on Sports Bit Betting Insight today. Paulie and Teddy follow us on Twitter at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers. Big game breakdown as always live odds. Sportsbookreview.com. First up, one game in the association. Cavs hit the road to take on the Jazz. Cleveland 3, 202 the total. LeBron, Kyrie, and Love have never won a game together in Salt Lake City. Last year, Jazz plus seven. They win by nine. Held the Cavs to 10 of 43 on threes, Teddy. Yeah, and I mean, note that Cleveland took 43 of their 88 shots from beyond the arc, which tells you they couldn't penetrate the paint. They were settling on the perimeter. And when you only hit 10 of 43 from beyond the arc, (laughs) tough to win a ball game. And obviously, only scored 85 points in that contest. And all of the big three played in that game. The single worst offensive game of the big three Cavs era, when all three have been in the game. And of course, two years ago, the Jazz... Uh, on this floor, plus five and a half, won the game outright 102-100. And the Cavs also had their big three on the floor in that contest. Yes, Jazz number three in defensive efficiency, 30th in tempo, but only one day off in return. They return home after five and seven on the road. They get three straight games and a full week at home now. So we'll see if the Jazz can cook something up here with this homestand. Always a tough place to play. Yeah, and, you know, I don't like the spot coming. I mean, that was a really tough road trip. Five in seven nights all over the East Coast. They looked gassed at the end of it. They didn't really play great basketball. And now a short turnaround after getting back home. Meanwhile, Cleveland, I mean, they started the road trip pretty lazy on defense. You know, they went up big early uh, against Phoenix. Not like the Suns were playing a whole lot of defense in that game. Uh, you know, they – but uh, – you know, 120 to 116 over the Suns. 116 to 1 over 8 over Brooklyn. Both of those games go over the total. Both of those games end up being point spread losses for Cleveland backers. And you wonder if that laziness at Phoenix came because there was a little bit of revenge look ahead in this one. But the big story for Cleveland right now, not their defense, it's the offense. They're getting Kyle Korver. He is likely to make his debut this evening. Still officially listed as questionable. And the Cavs... Pretty excited about picking him up <laughs> as opposed to having to play against him. I'm looking, I'm really excited to watch him play with this offense and the wide open looks he's going to get. And here's uh, Lou's quote. He's one of the best shooters of all time. You can add that to your roster. You go, if, if you can, you, you have to add it. Even though they even though they had uh, Teague and Millsap and Horford when they won 60 games, the biggest fear for us is Corfer, knowing you can't leave him, knowing you got to be with him at all times because he'll shoot the ball and you've got to be aware end quote. I mean, you talking about a guy who's 47% from three when he's wide open. He's going to get a ton of wide open looks in this offense. He sure will. But as LeBron said, what the Cavs need, they need a backup point guard. They haven't filled their biggest need. But Kyle Korver is going to help that team. And in terms of thinking forward to the playoffs, he's going to help them a lot in another finals rematch should they get there against the Golden State Warriors. College now, live out, sportsbookreview.com. Great game. Baylor on the road to take on West Virginia. Number one against number 10, and number one's undefeated, and they're six-point dogs. West Virginia six, 139 the total. Big surprise, Baylor at number one. You go back to the preseason polls, and you read your Blue Ribbon magazine. They weren't even ranked, Teddy. No, yeah, (laughs) the Bears are listed on page 161 of the Blue Ribbon, which tells you they were not in the preseason top 25. Now, they've legitimately earned the spot. You know, they're 15-0. They have wins over Louisville and Oregon and Xavier and Michigan State, all in non-conference play. That's good enough. Scott Drew, quote, As I shared with the players, 
Not many people get a chance to be ranked number one, and that's a great honor. Baylor Nation deserves it because they helped us get here. We're glad to make them proud and happy, and it gave them something to be excited about. But big picture, we know no one is going to remember who's ranked number one in the first week of January. This is my question about Baylor. I know they played really good so far. Are they good enough to stay there, Pauly? That's my biggest question. I will say no. Also, first-time number ones usually are only there for a short period of time. Uh, they are tough. They're great on the boards. But do they have enough on offense in a tough place to play? Well, and you talk about on the board. I mean, they're number five in the nation on defense. They're number four in block shots. You know, they got Joe Lala Keel among the best shot blockers in the nation. Of course, Jonathan Motley is an inside force. But I wonder if they can score in Morgantown because I'll tell you what. <laughs> Uh, if you want to play tough and physical, the Bears are going to win that just to, uh, they can win that matchup against just about anybody anywhere, but nobody is winning that in Bob Huggins' house. Last year, West Virginia, minus six. They beat Baylor 80 to 69 here, plus three in Waco. They win 69 58. So, pair of double digit victories for the Mountaineers over the Bears in the two matchups a season ago. When they're at home, it's another twist. It's just more pressure coming at you. So Baylor's going to have to take care of the ball against Huggy. Yeah, and, and I mean, West Virginia is playing the turnover game really at a historic pace. We talk about turnover percentage. All right, that's the percentage of possessions that end in a turnover. Their defense has forced turnovers close to 33% of the time. That's number one in all of college basketball. Their offense only turns the ball over a little over 14% of the time. That's number four in all of college basketball. So when you're talking about a team that's forcing more than double the turnovers that you're committing, it's unheard of. They've committed 151. They forced 347. You say, is this one of the best pressing rotations ever? They've got 10 different players averaging at least 10 minutes per game. Nobody goes more than 28. Seven different players are already in double figures in steals. Now, the West Virginia offense can break down when they're not scoring off turnovers and they have to actually run a half-court game. And if West Virginia is going to lose this game or fail to cover, it'll likely come because they're not forcing the turnovers. But, you know what? When they're forcing turnovers, man, that's a scary team to play against. And I think Baylor's going to be have their hands full this evening. We'll get back to this game when it comes to play of the daytime. Another great game. Live on sportsbookreview.com. Number 14, Xavier at number 3, Villanova. Nova, 7.5, 143 the total. Jay Wright dresses better than most NBA coaches. Now he has to be like an NBA coach the next couple months. The goal of unbeaten went out the window at the, the loss at Butler. Now he has to manage his team through the schedule until the tournament. Is he actually glad that they got beat? You know, you, 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 <laughs> that's a good question. And honestly, if I'm a head coach, I don't want the pressure of a team that won a title last year that's undefeated and the media glare is that much greater, and the pressure just ratchets and ratchets and ratchets up. So honestly, you never say, oh, loss is a good thing. I think for Villanova long term, that loss at Butler was a good thing. And of course, you know, we're talking about uh, a team that's loaded with seniors' daughters. You got Josh Hart, you got Chris Jenkins, you have Daryl Reynolds. And, you know, these are guys that don't have that much to learn at the collegiate level at this stage. So now that they've lost, you know, maybe Wright starts to distribute some of those minutes around a little bit, gets the team a little bit deeper. I think long-term it probably helps Villanova, even though short-term it sucks to lose. Yes, Xavier got embarrassed 95-64 to there on New Year's Eve last year, bounced back to win the rematch at home 90-83. to Figures to be a high-scoring game in this one as well. What do you think of the Musketeers this year? I love that team. You know, I, I, I love is too high, but uh, I mean, Xavier is as tough and as gritty year in as year year out as any, you know, no name college basketball program, and they've built the name for themselves. And I'll tell you, I bet you know, half college basketball fans can't even tell you where it is. Uh, but you know, it's a new season now in conference play, and uh, of course. They're going to bring back, uh, they're getting back Miles Davis. He's their senior point guard. He was suspended for 15 games after an off-court situation with his girlfriend. Here's what Chris Mack had to say uh, about uh, bringing him back. Quote, he's met the terms of his suspension that were outlined to him at the beginning of the school year. I think he's learned some valuable lessons from his mistakes. 
his 15-game long suspension, and his reinstatement. I think he needs to continue to make good choices and keep his standing within our program. He's obviously had a long road to this point, and his role on our basketball team will be no different from the other 14 guys in our locker room. He will earn every anything he gets from this point forward. So he's got a lot of work to do, and I think he recognizes that and understands that. So now we move forward with Miles as part of our team. Is this an energy boost with him coming back, or does it hurt the chemistry? You know, that's an interesting question uh, because, you know, what you've seen from Xavier so far, I mean, they've got the three Musketeers, you know, and Trevin Blewett, uh, Edmund Sunder, and, and J.P. Macro. You look at them <laughs> all rebounding the ball, scoring the ball, distributing the ball. Now you bring in a senior of a team that already had really good chemistry say, all right, you're going to distribute. It has the potential to create some hiccups in a system that's been working pretty well. All right, very good there. Some great games. Up next, Jimmy Vaccaro with the deep dive. Not a good weekend for the books. He'll run that down, and we'll preview the divisional round coming up. Are they hurt by any futures out there in the NFL? And, of course, the play of the day. Coming up on SportsBit, betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. Every Tuesday, it's the Deep Dive with Jimmy Vaccaro, bookmaker for over 40 years. If you're ever in Vegas, check him out at the South Point. Give him a follow on Twitter at Jimmy Vaccaro. Last week on the radio, you told me, man, watch out for the teaser liability. You were hoping just one of the road teams could come through. How bad was it for you? Well, that's part of the racket, pal. You just deal with what you got. You, you lose, you pay, and you win, you keep the money. Uh, obviously, the teasers didn't help one particular bit. Uh, we lost on them. We lost on the parlor cards. But actually, uh, the overall thing, we had a lot of late money on the 12 and a half with the Dolphins. That's how high we had to go with the game, almost ready to go to 13. Remember, they came up in nine and a half. And in that uh, scenario, everybody was on the Steelers. So it kept pushing and pushing and pushing. So naturally, you just keep trying to salvage something. So the 12 and a half, uh, we got what I would consider a very, very good amount of money. And they saved your late, actually, even though we lost the game was there was a lot of straight money on the Giants. It looked early on we had a decent chance, maybe A, to uh, cover the point spread, and B, maybe even win the football game. But that's the way it was. So, yes, teachers were a loser, but we're going to take them again this week. So, come on, line up. I never tell anybody, you know, not to bet something that's going good because it's tough to win. But when it's going your way, my friends, that's when you got to step up and try to win some money. Yeah. Also, Pittsburgh and Seattle staying under helped you. Okay, so obviously what you do, Paul, is that you save money because uh, every time it comes with the under, you know that there's about uh, 20% more on the parlay uh, that are involved in the over there. So we actually uh, play very well to some of the totals in the situation. But, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a blanket week, but uh, you know, we'll go on. And all I do, my friend, after 40-some years is just keep going forward. That's all you can do, just keep writing tickets. And the people, the other side of it, as we've talked about in Stephanie now, Mr. Howard, is like, it's absolutely incredible, the entertainment value. It's absolutely incredible the number of people come out. It's absolutely incredible they mm. sit and stay there for 10 or 12 hours a day. But after watching some of these games, you can't blame them for, for not sticking around. Can you compare the, the handle college football semifinals to an NFL playoff game? Yeah, it's, very, it's getting very close, I can tell you that. Nash is still not going to go overcome the NFL, but if you collectively put everything together, uh, then I would say that uh, you know, you're going to be there. We're going to be right there with any NFL team we have. Now, obviously, there are situations that uh, incur more play. Uh, you know, the Lions weren't like a marquee team in this thing. The Dolphins really didn't help. But the, in this week's game, you're having what you would consider uh, some games are just, it's just going to go through the roof. I mean, how much more could you ask for with the, the Packers and the Cowboys, a new kid on the block, and Aaron Rodgers going back two short months ago telling everybody to relax, and we'll see what happens from here. And actually, any time the Patriots are in there, you're going to draw more attention. We understand it's a big point spread on the Patriots, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? The, it, the matchups now are through the roof, especially of the two games that I talked about. Yeah. Where do you think that New England number goes off at? Could, could that get over 17? 
Uh, I don't think it's smart to let it go over 17 because you're still saying to yourself uh, when you're locked in the closet, I'm getting 17 points. I understand that uh, Osweiler is what he is. But then the other side of the coin is, uh, you know, Osweiler, they obviously contained him. What I mean by that, I mean his own team contained him. Once they got the lead against the kid who obviously had trouble, you know, finding the field there, the, the youngster from Oakland, they just absolutely just handed the ball off, handed the ball off, and just wasted time. I don't blame him. But Brian said, you know, we're just going to get out of here with the win. So they obviously didn't show anything. But that they're going to have to show something this weekend. So 17, I think, it's still probably it'll get there. But I think uh, a Sunday we'll get a lot of – or excuse me, when that game is, we'll get a lot of playback on that game because it is an NFL team. And call it like it is also. It's a pretty good defensive team for the Houston uh, for the Houston team. So I would imagine 17 will be as high as you would see it. And I would imagine – uh, they would golf that up, especially come the, come next week. A record handle for the Super Bowl still in play. You can get New England, Dallas, Pittsburgh, or Dallas. Uh, I'm right with you there. I hope it happens. One of those matchups. What are you in trouble with? Any potential futures? No, we're actually in good shape. Uh, uh, it's it's only because uh, we have learned the lesson on putting these things up. You know, right after the Super Bowl ends and they go to next year, you'd be amazed how much business you can write. We and we are not a very, you know, obviously we we consider ourselves a very good sports book. We're surely not you know, in line with the stations and and William Hills and the MGM because they have so many properties. But for us at the South Point and the Rampart, we wrote over a million dollars in futures just to win the Super Bowl. That's an incredible number if you look at it. So you can only guess what the other places did. And any time you keep writing tickets, Paulie, 10, 20, 30, 40, day after day from now until next September, if you manage it right, you should be in good shape. Uh, we had to, Oakland was probably our biggest loser. I mean, it would be substantial. It probably would have been around 100000 But right now, you know, we're actually in good shape. We need some of the favorites to get there. Uh, Patriots would be a big pickup, and so would the Steelers. So, you know, we're in good shape. But it took us 30 years to find a lesson on the, uh, the other people on the other side of the counter, which is smarter than us, and gave us the incentive to put these things up way early in the season. All right, I hope these games are close this weekend. They should be. We'll talk to you next week with the championship matchups. Thanks for five great minutes, sir. Stay well, my friend. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts. Shop for lines at sbrodds.com. Always be ahead of the game. Back on Sports Pit, thanks to Jimmy Vaccaro, and I hope he's right. If we can get Dallas, New England, or a Pittsburgh, Dallas Super Bowl coming up, should be a great handle and could be a terrific game as well. All right, we talked about this earlier. I mean, how often do you see an undefeated number one team in the country catching this many points, Teddy? Money time, play of the day, back to Baylor, West Virginia. Take it away. Yeah, let's take game number 520, West Virginia minus the six. The point spread here is telling you all you need to know about this contest. No defense in the country gets after the ball the way the Mountaineers challenge you on every possession. 520 is the betting number. Take West Virginia minus the six, and that is our play of the day. All right, very good. Another loaded show. And remember, Thursday and Friday, divisional round previews of the NFL, four great games and we'll get to uh, everything in the association coming up tomorrow. Maybe an answer with Derrick Rose. And it's a great card Tuesday in college. We'll talk to you then. Tell your friends. Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com.